Welcome back to Plague Size Studios, everyone. This video has been on my to-do list for way too long, but assuming we don't get another erroneous copyright claim this video, then I look forward to being able to tackle it and getting it out of the way so we can move on to some other interesting stuff. So today we're talking about the TH3 Cakewalk Suite. This is a free plugin that's included with the Cakewalk Audio Workstation program by BandLab. We're not gonna be taking a look at that specifically, though you will have to use that uh, program if you want to take advantage of this as a free product. But I'm kind of looking at this through a different lens in that you can't buy the full TH3 package anymore. It's actually discontinued. It's been uh, kind of converted and updated in a suite called THU. So this is really kind of a demo of that, even though they're technically two separate products. But there's some interesting stuff in here in the fact that several amplifier companies actually license their circuits and their names to be used in here. So you'll recognize some amplifiers. And it does offer some different functionality and uh, things that you know you may not see even on paid plugins, let alone some freeware. So we'll be seeing what kind of tones we can get, talking about its value versus free VSTs or budget options or especially other premium options on the market and um, see what kind of sounds we can dial up. This is more or less the starting screen you'll encounter upon opening Cakewalk, at least if you're using a pre-existing project file like I am. And I've not really used it to its full capability, as you've seen, I've, I've recorded a, a few little guitar DIs here and there, but I, I'm not really here to commentate on the Cakewalk program itself either, but holy UI, Batman. <laughs> this is just so much information, it gives me nausea. Uh, you know, something like this that's free, I think it should at least a little bit cater to a novice user base, someone who's just starting out. That's, you know, what's great about a free program to kind of, you know, get comfortable with, with how a audio workstation program works and um, kind of, you know, get your experience. And this is just uh, so overwhelming, even, even for me. So that, that would be one point of criticism. I'm really glad to see how much functionality is built in, in an otherwise free program, but like, good Lord, man, I'm glad I started on Reaper. That's all I can say. So let's open up TH3 here and, um, criticism number two, and this is something you guys shouldn't run into, but I use an ultra wide monitor, a 2560 by 1080 monitor. So normally I'd be able to see all of this. Um, but when you pare down the resolution, I guess something in the preferences file somewhere that I, I don't know where that might be. Uh, it doesn't update it in TH3, which means you get this lovely scroll bar across the bottom, um, which means I want to be using that a lot. But whatever your monitor resolution is, it should be smart enough to figure out to have all of these UI elements shown at the same time. So you will have to ignore that uh, little you know error in this review. But Normally when I've used this program, everything is at, at, at your fingertips immediately. So under a normal use case though, all the functions will be within a couple clicks away and you'll be able to see all parts of this plugin within one screen. So not a big deal for any potential users out there. Scrolling over here to the right, you'll be able to see all the toys we get to play with and it's a pretty healthy scroll bar. So quite a bit included here, not nearly to the extent that you might find in one of the paid versions of TH3 or especially THU now, but even compared to a lot of the included amp sims or especially the free trial versions of a lot of the premium stuff, this is quite a bit. So we got a basement model, we got a Fender Twin, a dual rectifier, uh, an orange. Um, I think this is supposed to be kind of like their high watt version. We've got three Randall channels. These are official Randall models, by the way, so that's pretty cool. Um, something based off of a JTM 45, a JCM 900, an SLO, uh, THD. It's another company that you'll see their actual models have been licensed, which is kind of cool. Uh, Vox AC 30, Fender Tweed, an Ampeg, and that's all the amp heads. So, you know, compared to something like, um, VST amp rack from Cubase, that's a really healthy selection. I would kind of like to see a couple more clean models here and there, and especially, you know, another base model would be great. But, you know, baseline elements, Cubase doesn't even have any base stuff at all. So this is killing it in comparison. 
nearly every head has a matching cabinet or something that will at least kind of pair logically with it with a one by 12, got a couple two by 12s, four by 12s include a Ingle, I've uh, got some greenbacks, uh, we've got one for the 5150, this one's uh, the Boogie, another 2x12, Brian May's AC30 sound, a 4x10, another, I think this is Vintage 30 in a Marshall cabinet, 4x10, Ashdown, that's, that one sounds pretty good, and a dedicated spot to load impulse responses, which is something that VST Amp Rack doesn't have, and even a lot of modern programs don't, which is crazy, but... Um, it, it is a little convoluted in getting it to work, but it does work. And once you get the workflow, it, it's way better than nothing. So can't complain too much. In terms of stop boxes, we're looking at these bog standard Ibanez Tube Screamer. We got a Big Muff Pie um, and different fuzz face model. And then the rest of these are, for the most part, modulation time-based effects. So um, some chorus, digital delay, compressor, a couple different flangers, phaser, spring reverb, uh, tremolo, Auto wall, a crybaby wall, um, gate and expander, and then an overall volume pedal. And a, a lot of this stuff that you can tie to, you know, outboard MIDI gear if you would like to actually have a real expression pedal for this stuff. So all things considered, especially compared to some of those, um, you know, bundled options I was talking about, pretty damn impressive, um, especially when you consider stuff like these microphones. They don't give you all of them, but they still give you three, and you know that's almost as many as a pod would have included. Uh, so you can choose between an SM57, a Royer 121, and of course a 414. To give this thing a spin real quickly in terms of building a preset, the workflow is rather good. Um, so you can kind of drag and drop stuff all around, and, and that even goes for literally running an amp head into another amp head. So if you want to use say a dual rectifier as a distortion pedal in front of a clean amp and you like that sound, you can absolutely do that, which is pretty cool. You can also do like parallel outs. It's easier for me to just show here instead of trying to do this. Um, these are some of the presets that, that come and A lot of these are actually, when they say building blocks, I, I kind of have to agree with them. I think they're pretty damn good building blocks. Um, here's another example of running a couple of pedals in front of a high gain head, and then you get some post effects after the cab section. You got, um, here we go. Here's a good stereo effects chain. So running a, uh, let's see, back this out a little bit, running a splitter into an AC 30 out to spring reverb over here. We've got a muff into a fender twin and that's going out to delay, mix that down and going into green back. So you can do quite a bit that is, on the one hand, much more capable. On the other hand, it is a bit more convoluted and maybe will present option paralysis for some people. But I think given the model quality and what it sounds like, I, th I think it kind of earns it and definitely makes it much more worthwhile compared to what a lot of bundled stuff has. With all that in mind, let's take a listen to a couple different tonal palettes, one of which will be uh, more in the crunch high gain territory. Then we'll go to a looped clean riff and see what kind of sounds we can get out of the different models with amp heads. Of course, all of this I'll be showing is built-in presets, which, you know, as they call our building blocks, none of these, I think, are really ready for my use straight out of the gate. There are a couple pretty cool ones in the, um, the first two banks here, but if you really want to get the most out of this, you'll have to tweak. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
A couple takeaways from that. First of all, I really like this Randall T2 model. It's actually articulate enough. It's EQ'd in a way that I don't think it really needs a boost all that much for a lot of stuff. For me, I, I like boosting it regardless, but um, it does take a tube screamer well and just a simple volume boost with a little bit of tweaked EQ can really send it over the top. But this one's a damn good model. I like it quite a bit. Um, of course, you can go over here and replace stuff pretty easily, but I also like the rectifier. Okay, it's not the absolute best model I've ever heard, um, but the modern mode definitely does the job. I think the biggest criticism I have with these high gain amps, um, particularly between like the rectifier and the JCM 900, is the gain structure really doesn't sound all that different. They, I don't know. It's like the EQ difference is definitely the the bigger. Uh, between the two, whereas, uh, you know, it's, it, they both have a very similar distortion profile in, in real life. You can definitely tell a difference between a dual rectifier and a Marshall, even if they're EQ'd the same, just based on that, um, you know, the, the texture difference. So um, it'd be, I'd be interested to see exactly how they modeled these because they are a bit closer than I think they should be. The Saldano does stick out quite a bit more. And um, like in the full version i have heard the 6505 5150 model and i think it's fairly faithful as well i like pretty much all the clean models i think they do a good job the ac30 ac15 is definitely for me one of the hardest ones to get right it it's as good as i've ever heard you know i would take this in the same use cases I would for Cubase's interpretation of it. In fact, I think this one's kind of better in a lot of ways. So with that, now let's hear a couple of the clean amps and the different presets built around those. I've got to say, I quite liked pretty much all of those tones. And as I've said before, when it comes to digital modeling in general, getting a good clean sound is much easier in the digital realm than it is for, say, a edge of breakup sound, especially, but even, you know, high gain rhythm and lead tones. So the bar is lower, but what that does reveal is, you know, a very good um, effect section. I think the, the delays and reverbs are really pristine and i think in terms of the stereo image and the overall sound and way they sit in the mix i like these better than a lot of the built-in plugins and stuff that i've used i really like the um, roomworks and standalone delay vsts in cubase i feel like they do the job almost every time for you know if i need to add a little bit of um, room sound or just a little bit of ping pong to a certain part um, i really don't need to go any further but for the guitar-centric stuff that's built in, I basically never use it. I really don't like the sound of it, and they're not tweakable enough. But with this, I mean, it really is. You've got you know low high pass. You've got um, different levels and regions, spread stuff that you don't get in a small pedal, which is why they put this in a you know kind of a, a rack look. So I'm definitely about that. But to put those effects to the real test, let's see what it sounds like with a high gain rhythm sound in front. Thank you. 
There is certainly still something very VST plug-in-y, <laughs> if that's a word, about the attack overall pick sound, um, where it, it's just like that hard scrape boxy attack that does not sound at all like a you know a real amp or a quality modeler would. Um, really, even like older Line Six stuff doesn't. But I think it's a combination between the impulse responses and the rectifier sim itself. And again, a couple of these models do suffer that same fate, I, I find. But it still sounds good. It's definitely usable. And um, if you can get past just that that tiny touch of artificialness, then I think it'll definitely work in a mix. And it's really still, I, I think, a, a good kind of stepping stone for someone that's just getting started with VST plugins. But let's give this another fair shake in the high gain territory. We'll go with the Randall T2 this time on the boost channel with um, a tube screamer up front. As you'll notice, I've actually dialed the gain back or the tone rather and the gain um, a lot, which is something I normally wouldn't do. It'd be 12 o'clock, at least generally closer to, you know, two to three o'clock. But for this, it really doesn't need it, um, because of how articulate the amp is already. And I really wish they would have included a clean boost in front, um, that you could use or simply a, an EQ of any kind. As you'll see in a minute, I do use an EQ in the pre-effects chain, but it would have been nice to have it here. So this is kind of what you can expect out of this amp model. There is, again, almost a hint of that sort of artificial pick attack I was talking about earlier, but it's much less pronounced with this one to the point I, I don't even think you'd really hear that much in a mix at all. And th this amp just sounds really good. It blends with pretty much all of the cab models they include. I, I especially think it sounds better with... Um, you know, one of the own, one of your own impulse responses, if you want to throw that in there, but, um, this one's one of my favorites and I'm really glad that they included this in the free version as uh, I think it, it's definitely a standout feature for my take on a deep, clean sound. We'll be running a compressor into a blackface fender and a two by 12 that matches it kind of a stereo super chorus sound into another spring reverb. <laughs> I'm admittedly a little spoiled now to the clean sounds that are capable on that newest Neural DSP release with the Pliny amp plugin. So this one doesn't sound quite as pristine to my ears, but it's still definitely very capable. And I think this is another case where a quality impulse response would really help to round out the sound as a whole. 
Turning the game back up once again, I want to try out a fuzz face through a high watt laney kind of sound through greenbacks to approximate a classic rock Sabbath sort of tone. <laughs> I really like with this example is you know this isn't the highest gain sound in the world even with a moderately driven fuzz into you know a cranked up um, custom plexi type it's really quiet like um, you don't hear any pre or post noise whatsoever so whatever noise gate they're running on the input and whatever they're doing to the the overall um, processing it, it really is kind of impressive because that, that was one thing that has really aggravated me um, on both the crunch and even clean tones on some of the legacy products that I've looked at here recently is just how overburdened with you know high frequency noise is. There's no way to dial it out, and with that sort of noise, you simply can't dial it out. It is so pervasive in every audible part of the, the frequency spectrum. It's not like you can take a raw guitar signal and chop it off after you know, 5K, It's you can still hear it. So I'm really impressed with what they're doing here to keep it that pristine and um, definitely puts a lot of premium stuff to shame. Finally, for the finale, we're actually running a EQ plugin up front, which again, I would have liked to have seen just a free EQ pedal thrown in there. Bass middle treble would, would have been pretty cool. Um, this is sort of, you know, the, the standard Fortin curve at this point running through the Randall model, going through a noise gate, and then a custom 4x12 impulse response, which I believe I'm using an own hammer, yep, Uber cab. And this, again, this one isn't like the most elegant way of loading impulse responses, but I'm, I'm happy they have them. You can import several into your own group and then, you know, pick from there. It is a bit problematic compared to the streamline. Um, setup that you'll find in some premium plugins, but this one is actually not bad once you get used to the workflow. And this is kind of the sound you can expect out of third party stuff. <laughs> It is a bit of a bummer that you have to use another effect slot to achieve this sound with the EQ, though that's really not that big of a deal considering I'm used to mixing and matching different third-party free VSTs, kind of do the same, you know, similar thing. But overall, I really dig the sound of this amp, the single chain in general for extended range guitars. And for that reason, I think this is way better than what a lot of other, um, you know, audio workstation programs include for seven and eight string players, especially those where you can't change the IR. That's generally the biggest bummer. Um, if you can't mix between different, you know, things or you're limited to one microphone or, you know, a couple of different speakers that simply are not going to work for your sound, then sorry, you're SOL. But between this amp and the other very well-known high gain sounds that you can get out of this plugin, I think it's a pretty good compliment. I think they picked some really good ones. I would love to have seen you know, 6505 or 5150 in this free suite, but I think between this, the Saldano, and the 
rectifier, they pretty much cover, you know, I think 90% of the ground that most people are going to want tonally. Um, and that was my biggest complaint with Cubase is not every high gain sound is a rectifier and their JCM 800 um, style amp just didn't cut it for a lot of that stuff where I think this 900 and especially the SLO, you know, you'll, you can find that sweet spot between the two of them. And it's nice to have the orange, which, you know, didn't show off to the, its full extent in, uh, in this, but definitely um, a good one to have in uh, your back pocket if you're a classic rock or doom metal player. So overall, as a plugin, I'm fairly impressed and I can only imagine, and according to reviews and things I've heard, that THU is, is only better for what it includes. I know some models got an overhaul. I think many of them were simply ported and, you know, maybe they were upsampled or whatever. But for the most part, you're getting a similar sort of sound. So even assuming this was exactly what you're going to hear, it's not bad. It's really not. Um now, if you're going to pay two to three hundred dollars for it, it starts to get questionable in some ways. Um, but I'm the same person that you know. I think if you really like the sound of of something, say like one of the those aforementioned neural DSP plugins, they're expensive. You know, hundred to hundred thirty bucks for software. But considering what it's replacing, it's really not that expensive at all. Considering you know one of these amp heads would be past a grand. So if you view it through that lens and then you got stuff like Helix native, that's 400 that has a lot more options. But as far as it goes, you know, I, I actually really like this as a, as a plugin. So I'd, I'd be kind of um, curious to check out what THU has to offer as, you know, a new package. Um, and I would definitely say this one gets my vote versus something like um, Biasamp, especially. I've not been impressed with that plugin ever, <laughs> ever since it came out. Um, the you know the overhaul 2.0 version of it still not. Um, I really don't like the whole nickel and dime structure that a lot of other different um, companies take, whether it be with Pod Farm or Amplitude. And with this one, if you can just get everything up front, I, I support that more. So um, I, I think TH3, in terms of being a cakewalk bundle, is excellent. And this does make me want to check out THU for those that you know want to see a more full-fledged experience. But this is what I would like to see more of in terms of, of built-in stuff. And hopefully as time goes on, we will. So yeah, overall, um, I'm, I'm really happy with it. I think there's always, you know, work to be done and things to improve, but if you want, you know, this kind of streamlined drag and drop, make a stereo chain kind of experience, you know, it's very, it very well may be worth a couple hundred dollars if you don't want to piecemeal different, um, you know, freeware plugins like I do together. So that's my two cents. Hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, comments, as always, please leave them down below. And we will hopefully see you sooner rather than later with uh, some more budget-oriented stuff like this. I know you guys have been asking for it. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>